Hi, it's Len Cameraman. In this video, I'm going to show you how to do a really basic ACT report using Crystal Reports. Uh, sometimes the, the formatting capabilities or some of the calculations that we need to do are, are just not something that the ACT report writer is well suited to do. So my favorite reporting tool for ACT is Crystal Reports. Uh, Crystal Reports license will cost you about $500, but they have a 30-day trial version available and there is viewer software that we use. Uh, we use something called Logicity, and they have a free version that will allow you to run the report. So we write reports for clients and then distribute them, and they will run that uh, either with the free or the pro version of the Logicity viewer. So I'm going to show you how to do a basic report, and then in other videos, we'll drill down further. So to get started, go ahead and click on the New button, and then you want to create a connection to your database. I've already got mine done, but I'm going to walk you through that anyways. You're going to go and expand the OLEDB ADO, and then choose Make New Connection. Okay, and then the provider that you want to choose is the ACT OLEDB provider for reporting 2.0. Okay, 2.0 allows us to report on activities. It's got some other advantages, and it also will not go away anytime soon. This is available in ACT 2010 and later. Hit the next button, and then you need your data source, which is the path to the pad file for your ACT database. So if you don't have that, go into ACT, go to the Help menu, click About ACT, and then go to this Database Information button, and it's going to give you the path to your ACT database. I'm going to copy that, and then I'm going to paste that back into Crystal Reports. Okay, so I've got that there. Then my ACT username goes in here. One of the great things about this reporting provider is that it only gives me access to what I'm allowed to see in ACT. Rather than going straight to the raw database, it's only showing me what I have access to. So if I run this report as another user who is a bit locked down and can't see everything, the report will, uh, will respect that and only give them the information that they have access to. Okay, put in a password if you have one. I'm using the demo database as Chris Huffman, so there isn't one. And the database you'll leave blank. Hit next. Hit finish. And then if all goes well, you should end up with a node that you can expand underneath here, which has the name of your pad file. Expand that, and then expand DBO. This is where all the tables are that the reporting provider gives us. In my example, I'm going to do um, a pretty quick and dirty list of activities grouped by contact. Okay, so I need the activity table, and I need the contact table, and then I need a cross-reference between the two. Okay, so to link those up and see which activities belong to which contact, and that one's called contact underscore activity. Okay, the naming conventions are pretty straightforward. Now, if you need a list of contacts and opportunities, Grab contact, grab opportunity, there's a cross-reference. Okay, so that, that's pretty straightforward. Hit next. And then Crystal Reports is going to try to match things up for us, and we want to correct what we need to. And most of the time you're looking to match the ID from one table with the ID in another. Okay, so it looks like it got activity ID matched up to activity ID in our cross-reference table here. But I want to get rid of these links. So I right-click. I say remove all links, and I want to link up my contact table to the cross-reference table. So I'm looking for contact ID here. I'm going to bring that over. And that looks good, so I'll hit next. Okay, now I choose what fields I want on the report. Okay, and I actually want to have the contact's name which is in the contact table. Okay, so their full name is just called contact. And actually, I'm going to take this one out because I want to group on this, but I don't want that showing up next to every activity. I'm going to take that one back out. I am going to go to the activity and choose the start date and time. And I'm going to choose the regarding and perhaps the activity type as well. Okay, so those are the three fields that I want to see for every activity. I'll click Next, 
and now I choose what do I want to group on. And so I'm going to group this by contact. And if I expand contact, I'm going to choose the contact field here. I'm going to group on that in ascending order is fine, so it's going to do it alphabetically. Hit next. And then if I want a summary, that might be an average, it might be a maximum, or even a count, I can choose that here. And so I'm going to count the regarding line. But I don't want a maximum, I want just a count. I don't want a distinct count, because I don't want to count how many unique regarding lines there are, but I want, actually want to count each and every regarding line in my activities. And that, that's effectively going to tell me how many activities each contact has. Click Next. And then for what kind of ordering do you want, we're going to hit None there. We don't just want to see the top five or bottom five or anything like that, so we hit Next. I don't want a chart, so I'm going to hit Next again. And the one thing that I will change here is I don't want any activities that don't have a contact tied to it. And the way that I can do that is by filtering. Okay, so we could do filtering based on dates and things as well. I just want to make sure that I don't get any activities showing up. Okay, and the way that I'll do that is I want contact. I want to make sure that the contact is not equal to blank. Okay, that will make sure I only get activities that have a contact. Click Next, and then I can choose the template. If you have a specific look that your report needs to have, I would recommend not choosing a template uh, so you don't have to undo any formatting. But in my case, where I'm not picky on how um, what kind of formatting it is, I just want it to look nice, I'm going to choose this block blue template, which, trust me, is going to look better than the preview here. And then hit Finish. Okay, so now it creates the report, and it's created a report for us that lists off the contact, uh, the start date and time, the regarding and the activity type. Okay, so this needs a little bit of work yet. Um, I don't like how the start time is running right into the name here. The regarding could probably have a little bit more, a little more space in it. And I also don't want this line break after each, after each contact. Okay, so what I do is I go back to the design tab, and here's where I can make changes to the fields that show up, the formatting. And so what we'll do is we'll move the activity type over. Actually, I want to get the contact name out of here. So I'm just clicking on the heading delete. And I'm going to move that start date and time over. So I've chosen them. I'm going to use the arrow keys to move them over here. And then the regarding, I want to make longer. So I'm actually going to move that, move that over and then select both with a control key. Drag that out to about here and grab that activity type. Move that over. Okay, and I'm going to change the headings because I don't want my heading to say start underscore date time. That looks a lot nicer like that. Type. The other thing I want to do is I want to change the, the group name, which is the contact right now, so that it includes their company name. So to do that, I'm going to right click and then go to change group, go to options, and then click on customize group name field. And use a formula. And that formula is just going to be contact plus inside quotes here, I'm going to put a dash, closing quote, plus the company name, and then hit save and close. Click on OK. Now if I preview again, okay, you can see that it's got the company name in there as well. Okay, I could do some more formatting to get the date and time to show up a little better than that, but I'm, I'm happy with that for now. I've got my type in here. That looks good. The last thing that I want to do is, is just take the, uh, the page break out after each one. So if I go into the design, and I right click in the group here and go to section expert. Okay, and it's actually if I go to the group footer here and go to paging, I want to uncheck this new page after. 
That should do it. Click OK. Go to preview. Okay, now if I go to these records, yeah, now you can see after each one, it has the next contact right away. Okay, so I could do a lot more filtering with this report yet. I could have it prompt me for a date range, um, but, but the idea here is I want to show you how to connect to an ACT database, how to choose some fields and quickly run a report. And then again, the idea that you can do this with Crystal Reports. Uh, you can download a 30-day trial from, uh, from SAP, the company that makes Crystal Reports. I'm using the 2011 version. And then if you need to distribute this to people, they don't have to license Crystal Reports. You can use a Crystal Report viewer, or there are different ways to distribute them, but the one that I like to use is Logicity. And they have a free version that you can install, and that will allow you to run this report without needing to use Crystal Reports ongoing. So you just need to use it to create your report originally and to make changes to it. Okay, so again, I'm Len Cameraman from Hero Technical Solutions, and you can visit our website at www.yourcrmhero.com uh, for lots more information about uh, ACT and Microsoft CRM.